Hey guys, welcome to this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday. Now before we begin, if you're new to our YouTube channel, these videos are all about answering your health related questions. So if you have a question concerning your health, something regarding diet and nutrition, health in general, Chinese medicine, herbalism, really anything related to health and wellness, and you would like our help in answering your questions, all you have to do is leave those questions in the comment section below, and we'll be answering those based on popularity, the questions we feel that are most beneficial to the community as a whole, and of course the questions that we are capable of answering. And something else really great about these videos is that every week from that comment section, we select one lucky person to win a free bag of tonic herbs or medicinal mushrooms of their choice. So even if you don't have a health question for us this week, but you're interested in winning some free herbs or mushrooms, all you have to do to be entered to win is simply give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet already, and just drop any old comment in the comment section below. And with all that being said, let's get to this week's questions. All right, so getting to our first question, this is a question pertaining hair loss and the use of Accutane, which is a prescription retinoid, synthetic vitamin A, used for acne that is known to have many negative side effects. In fact, speaking with one of my nurse friends, there's something, a phenomenon referred to as Accutane babies, where if you get pregnant on Accutane, a baby can be born basically without a brain or a partial brain and be in really, really bad shape. So this just goes to show you that Accutane and its toxic effects can be very severe. So naturally, I'm not surprised to hear that you're experiencing some sort of adverse side effect with the use of Accutane. And there's actually some research that corresponds with your question. But getting to the question for the rest of you, this reads, what do you know about the connection between Accutane and hair loss? I took Accutane about a year ago and began experiencing hair thinning around that time. My younger brother also took Accutane and is having the same issue, and we are both in our late teens. Our older brother is not losing his hair from it, nor is any other male or relatives of ours. The thinning is diffuse, and the onset was rather sudden. I have seen no signs of regrowth after a year, nor has my brother. If you could give us some information or advice, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, so first and foremost, I just want to quickly share with you this study, and you can look at it for yourself. I'll link it below. And it's basically on the correlation between Accutane and hair loss and hair thinning, and it basically points out exactly what you're talking about. What they came to find in the conclusion was that the use of Accutane does have an effect on hair growth, and specifically hair thinning. Now, the study pointed out that they didn't notice hair thinning effects when the dose was short term, so only taking it for maybe a couple of weeks, under six months, and if the dose was low, so not taking a high dose of it. Now, explaining what is possibly going on, some of the mechanism behind it, first and foremost, let's talk about what vitamin A does in the body. Now, on the positive end of things, vitamin A is essential for the production of all of your hormones. It's even essential for good thyroid function and can have a pro-thyroid effect. So what happens in your body is that cholesterol, the basic substrate created by the liver or that you acquire through your diet, synthesizes with vitamin A. And the combination of cholesterol and the synthesization with vitamin A produces the mother hormone, DHEA, which ultimately becomes pregnenolone, progesterone, testosterone, and ultimately every hormone in your body. So the point is that vitamin A is essential for the production of all of the hormones in your body. And in most cases, people are deficient in vitamin A because they don't get it enough through their diet. And this is largely due to the fact that vitamin A is in foods that people don't like to consume. So the retinol or the bioavailable form of vitamin A is commonly found in animal foods, most abundantly in egg yolks, which there's a lot of dogma around. You know, we're told to eat the white and not the yolk. It's found in things like beef liver and organ meats, grass-fed butter, ghee, and again, a lot of the foods that people tend to not eat due to dietary dogmas and misinformation. Not to mention that the plant versions, plant forms of vitamin A, also known as the carotenoids or beta carotene, are first and foremost poorly converted. So the vitamin A from things like carrot and sweet potatoes are poorly converted into the active retinol form, rendering it unavailable for cellular use. Not to mention that the structure of beta carotene is similar to that of a polyunsaturated fat which actually blocks the secretion and transport of thyroid hormone throughout the body. So what's interesting about vitamin A is that 
you need a very optimal dose. You need a very specific balanced dose of it. Getting not enough of it can result in antithyroid effects. It can result in not having enough vitamin A can definitely result in issues. It can result in hormonal issues, hormonal balances, and even thyroid issues. However, on the other hand, the type of vitamin A that you get could be contributing to thyroid issues or also getting too much of it. Now, if you're just consuming the retinol forms of vitamin A, you're probably safe. The dangers of consuming a lot of plant versions of vitamin A is that first and foremost is poorly converted. So you build up this carotenoid in the body and this can cause carotenemia, which is toxicity from the beta carotenoids that can damage your liver. So this can directly cause issues to the liver and the liver is crucial for good hair growth because it activates the thyroid hormone. It turns the inactive form into the active form and the thyroid is the basic hormone that regulates hair growth, makes the hair shaft strong, and ensures that your hair is in a growing and not a resting phase. So tying this in with Accutane. Accutane is a synthetic vitamin A. And we know that vitamin A in a carotenoid form, consuming too much of it, especially if you're hypothyroid, if you're taking in a lot of synthetic vitamin A, like Accutane, or if you're taking in too much plant vitamin A, the beta carotenoids, this can actually have an antithyroid effect. So this is likely how Accutane is causing diffuse hair thinning. It's basically giving you hypothyroidism, I'd imagine. I'd imagine that the Accutane and the synthetic vitamin A in it is having the powerful antithyroid effect very similarly to the way that too much beta carotene can have an antithyroid effect. It's possible that the synthetic vitamin A in Accutane is a similar structure to the polyunsaturated fats, not to mention that it's also likely just too much vitamin A. You're probably getting a toxic dose of vitamin A, even in the most standard dose of Accutane. So to put all of this in fewer words, it's possible that the Accutane has a toxic dose of vitamin A, which is having an antithyroid effect, and that's what's giving you that diffuse hair thinning. If you watched our last two FAQs, I basically talked about how diffuse hair thinning is basically hypothyroid hair loss. Anybody that's experienced hypothyroid hair loss it's typically seen as or manifest as the diffuse thinning. That's usually how you know your hair loss is largely being caused by hypothyroidism. And the good news is that it can be corrected. Uh, this is probably the simplest form of hair loss to reverse, whereas like slick bald patches, you know, there's fibrosis involved, there's calcification involved, a lot of mitochondrial damage involved. And that can be reversed too. It's just gonna take a lot, lot longer and a lot more discipline. So the basic thing I'd recommend for solutions would be come off the Accutane if you haven't already. And I would highly recommend at the same time, you're gonna to wanna to avoid any synthetic vitamin A's. And you're also gonna make sure that you're not getting in those beta carotenoids. So take it easy on any plant forms of vitamin A and get it from the animal sources, the ones I mentioned, egg yolks, beef liver, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, even good quality grass-fed dairy. And you don't need to exceed any more than two egg yolks a day to get the amount of vitamin A that you need for good thyroid function. And this can have a beneficial effect on the hair quality as well. And my general piece of advice would be to get that thyroid back into good shape. I'd imagine that ultimately the Accutane gave you hypothyroidism. So avoiding the synthetic vitamin A's, getting the retinol forms of vitamin A is one simple way to improve thyroid function. You're gonna also wanna avoid the polyunsaturated fats, and you're gonna to wanna to do a few simple things with your diet and lifestyle to get the thyroid back into good shape. We have tons of free resources here on the YouTube channel, but I'd ultimately recommend our Forever Healthy Hair course. That's one of the best courses that you could take in correcting all sorts of hair loss. We target it from a physiological perspective, and if you're somebody with hypothyroid hair loss and you apply all the information in that course, you're likely to see quicker results. You could probably see full restoration to the hair within a matter of a year or two. So because you have diffuse thinning, you're more likely to see results in a matter of time that are more visible. Where again, if it were against slick bald patches or if you've been losing your hair for eight, 10 years, that might take a lot longer, uh, at least longer than somebody with diffuse thinning. So definitely check that course out. It'd be one of the best resources for all-in-one, one-stop sort of shop for getting everything you need to know about the right diet, lifestyle practices, the right herbs and supplements that could get your thyroid back in good shape and get your hair growing at a normal and healthy rate. Otherwise, just start researching everything you can about thyroid function. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad information out on the internet about what's good or not for the thyroid, but you can get a general idea. And again, the reason this is important is because 
it sounds very much like the Accutane probably just gave you vitamin A toxicity, damaging the liver, having an anti-thyroid effect. So other than looking up everything you can about thyroid function and how to improve the function of your thyroid, again, I would just definitely recommend grabbing that Forever Healthy Hair course. It's a lifesaver in my opinion, and a lot of other people have been enjoying the information on that course because it provides a perspective on hair loss that is a lot more physiologically sound and therefore actually effective. <laughs> Moving along, this question is very simple. It reads, what is the best supplement to regulate hunger? Okay, so when you say regulate your appetite, are you specifically referring to keeping a more balanced appetite or are you talking about trying to boost, increase your appetite or suppress it? Because at the end of the day, your appetite is being regulated. You don't need a supplement for it. Your appetite is being regulated by your metabolism. In fact, your appetite, your cravings for certain things, your general hunger is a really, really good indicator of what's going on in your body. It's one of the simplest ways to stay in communication with your body in regards to how to eat a healthy diet. So I actually would not recommend trying to find some sort of exogenous substance, something outside of you to regulate your appetite because it's your body's simplest and perhaps most profound way of telling you every single moment every day what's going on and what do you need or not. So the body gives you tons of clues, tons of signs and signals, symptoms of diseases or even ways of your body communicating with you, but your appetite is perhaps the most constant in regular way of your body telling you, hey, I need something or I don't need something, help me out. So what I mean by this is that your metabolism is gonna dictate your appetite ultimately. So generally speaking, the slower your metabolism is, the less of an appetite you're gonna have. This is why when you fast, once you get into you know, 24 hours plus into a fast, your appetite tends to disappear. You hear people talk about this all the time. You know, At first I went through these hunger pains, those hunger pains being your body saying, hey, you're putting me in a state of stress, eat something before my blood sugar gets so, so low that I start secreting tons of stress hormones, tons of adrenaline and cortisol, and I have to shift you into survival mode, into stress metabolism and start breaking down and mobilizing your fat tissue and catabolizing your body to stay alive. When your body does enter that state, people refer to this as sort of a the highlight of, or the peak of their fast. Like this is the best part of the fast because now you're coasting, the hunger pains are gone, and people generally say that they feel a euphoric sense of higher bliss, unknowingly experiencing a stress high of gluconeogenesis. So what I'm getting at is don't try to regulate your appetite from the outside. Your body is gonna be regulating it for you all the time. And again, the one extreme of it is having such a non-existent appetite because your body is generally stressed out. When your body is really, really stressed out, it goes to this point where your body is in such a state of panic and such a state of survival that it's not going to even try to bother you with eating. Your body is just trying to fight for its life. And this is why, for example, like if you have an adrenaline spike, like let's say you get into a near death situation, you're going to notice you're probably not hungry for a few hours. Or if you're just really, really stressed out somewhere at work or if you're exercising for a long period of time, you're doing a marathon, you're not going to be that hungry. Your, your appetite is not going to kick back on until you get out of this state of stress. Remember, appetite is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, people with very strong appetites tend to have very high metabolic rates. So generally speaking, I think having a strong appetite is one of the key biomarkers of good health. You know, there's that whole idea, that golden rule of thumb, that the three H's are the best indicators of good health, being happy, hungry and horny. So generally feeling good psychologically, mentally and emotionally, feeling pleasure, a sense of well-being, it's a sign of a good functioning thyroid, good dopamine levels, not being stressed, and also having a good sex drive is actually a strong indicator of good health, and lastly, a strong appetite. All these things are gonna be very indicative of good health. So to answer your question, I actually wouldn't necessarily recommend a supplement to try to regulate your appetite, instead, I would focus on a more broader range goal, which would be to stay in a more balanced parasympathetic state, a more relaxed state, avoid stress as much as possible. Stress really throws off your metabolic rate and your appetite. 
You know, the glucocorticoids can make you either very, very hungry, abnormally hungry, so you start to stress eat, or they can just get rid of your appetite altogether. Neither of these are an ideal uh, state to be in in regards to natural hunger and appetite. So instead, I would say focus on staying relaxed and calm, and instead of focusing on what to eat or what not to eat, find something that's just more interesting. I generally find that people that have a lot of passions in life, a lot of hobbies, they like to do things, they're generally interested people, that hunger and food very comes very naturally to them. It's just second nature. It's not a job for you to figure out as much, that's a job of your body. So let your body figure that out by telling you when to eat and when not to eat. That's your body's way of trying to get you back into balance. So in regards to hunger, I say listen to your body, follow that as best as you can and it won't lead you astray. If you're somebody that has a strong appetite and you think you shouldn't because you shouldn't be eating, that's probably a good thing on the behalf of your body. Your body's probably trying to get you back into a state of balance. If you're starving yourself, if you're fasting, if you're restricting calories, this is a perceived stress by the body. So your body's gonna tell you to eat. This is why you crave salt and sugar when you're stressed out because your body uses salt and sugar to cope with stress. This is generally why people will become hungry once the stress dies down to try to get their body back into balance, regulate their blood sugar, and regulate the stress hormones. So I'd say more than a supplement for regulating your appetite, I would just say take a pro-metabolic stance in regards to eating. Do things and eat in a way that support the health of your metabolism as a whole. If you want tips there, definitely check out my healthy weight loss course. This isn't just for people trying to lose weight, it's for people trying to achieve a healthy weight. So that's also gonna apply to people who are, let's say, thin, trying to put on a healthy amount of muscle mass or body mass and have a healthy body mass index. So it's beneficial for both people trying to lose weight and also put on healthy weight. It's just generally a good course for learning how to eat from a non-dogmatic, physiologically-based approach. So definitely check that course out for more tips on how to eat in general, I think, uh, from a non-dogmatic standpoint and something that's generally easy to follow. All right, guys, that brings this week's FAQ and Freebie Friday to a close. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Remember, if you're interested in winning some free herbs or mushrooms, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave a comment in the comment section below or ask a question. And don't forget to hit that like button on this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.